Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. It's time for us to get bold and start stepping out and doing what the word says. You begin to say, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. There's no more condemnation to those who are in Christ. I am a new creature. I'm born again into an ever living hope. God's anointing is on me and I refuse to be anything but the head. We need to understand that God wants us to enjoy the life that he's given us. And we need to rest. And, and not only rest your body, but you have to have internal rest. You have to not worry about something all the time and not always be trying to figure out the answer to some problem or get, just trying to reason everything you don't understand. You can not understand things and survive because God understands. He knows. <laughs> Amen? So boy, this guilt thing was really, really, really hard for me. And I learned the power of confessing the word God wants to meet your needs. He wants you to have an abundance and more so you can be a blessing to other people. I do not understand why that old dead, dry religion wants everybody that's a Christian to be poor and broke and miserable and go around with their head hanging down feeling miserable. I mean, that is wicked. That is not God's will. I will supply all of your need according to my riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. Give and it shall be given unto you good measure, pressed together, running over. Bring your tithes and offerings into the storehouse and I will open the windows of heaven and pour out blessings so great that you cannot contain them. Now not everybody has the same amount. And I'm not saying everybody's going to be rich, but I do believe that God wants to meet your needs. Amen. 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 And that whole, that, just that religious mindset just makes me so mad because it steals what Jesus died for his people to have. You can enjoy your life And you do not have to spend your life feeling guilty and condemned over every little mistake you make. The reason why Jesus came is because we are so pathetic if we're left alone that we will do nothing but make mistakes. And you can be saved up your eyeballs and you're still going to make mistakes. Because as long as you have a human flesh, you're not going to do everything right all the time. And I learned the power of confessing God's word. And I think I mentioned in one of the other teachings, I've probably said a, a million times in my life, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. And that makes religious people mad. Well, who do you think you are? You didn't hear the in Christ part. I am the righteousness of God in Christ, not in myself. You need to know the difference in your who and your do. I don't do everything right, but I know who I am in Christ. And I tell you what, I am so sorry when I sin. Oh, I'm so sorry because I love the Lord and I don't want to disappoint him. And I, I don't, but he already knows everything I'm going to do before I do it. You're no surprise to God. He didn't say, oh, no, I didn't know you were going to be like that. <laughs> We think, oh, I bet God is so disappointed. He already knew what you're going to do before you did it. God looks on the heart of man. And you obviously care deeply about your relationship with God, or you wouldn't be spending all day on Saturday your one Are of your two days a week off here listening to me preach the Word of God to you. And so God sees your heart. The Bible says that when the Word is sown in your heart, that Satan comes immediately and tries to steal it. 
And one of the ways he does that is you come and you hear all this good word, and then before you get home, <laughs> you get mad at somebody trying to get out of the parking lot. Come on. Or you get in a fight with somebody out at the resource table over who's going to get the last series on love. Yeah, I had two women fighting at the resource table one time over who was going to get the last series on love. I'm like, well, it's obvious you both need it. You know, the flesh is just stupid. That's all you can say about it. That's all you can make out of it. It's just stupid. But thankfully, we've got the wisdom of God on the inside of us. And I'll tell you what I am grateful for. I am so grateful for the conviction of the Holy Spirit. Oh, my gosh. I remember when I could mistreat people and didn't even know I was doing it. Well, I, not now. I mean, the minute I'm even the, uh, the least bit got a little bad attitude or a cranky tone towards somebody, it's like, I know it. Oh, God, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. And if I need to, I'll tell the person I'm sorry. Don't ever be afraid to say, hey, I'm sorry I was wrong. And don't make excuses for it. Just say, I'm sorry I was wrong. It sets you free, and it says a lot to them. And so I started confessing, I am the righteousness of God in Christ, set apart and made holy by the blood of the Lamb. No weapon formed against me shall prosper, but every tongue that rises up against me in judgment I will show to be in the wrong. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a little list of things. This is a homework assignment. You, you may have to make up your own because you won't remember this once you get out of the door, I don't imagine. But <laughs> how about if every day you say out loud, you don't need to say it to somebody because they wouldn't understand it. It would make you look like you were full of pride. But it's the words. Words have power. Do you understand that? Words have power, and the more you speak them, the more you begin to believe them yourself. So when I say, speak the word, I'm not talking about saying, I'm going to be a millionaire and be the president of the company. I'm talking about saying about yourself what God says about you. So how about this? I am loved by God. I am anointed. I am talented. I am special, one of a kind. I'm not an accident. God created me with his own hand. I'm growing spiritually every day. Every day I'm changing from glory to glory. I like myself. I love myself. I enjoy myself. I'm walking in God's will. I am totally forgiven for all my sins. God has a good plan for me. I am going to do something great with my life. How do, you, how do you think that would, I mean, seriously, how do you think that would start to change you? But there's probably very few people in here that do that. How many of you say negative things about yourself out of your own mouth? I'm so stupid. I never do anything right. I'm so fat. <laughs> my feet are too big. My nose is too crooked. I hate myself. I wish I looked like you. I wish I was this. I wish I wish. Well, you're not going to ever be somebody else. You're stuck with you. So you need to learn how to love it. Can you imagine how your life would change if you actually would embrace yourself and really just like who you are? <laughs> Stop trying to be your pastor's wife or your neighbor next door. And, you know, I've told all my stories. I'm not, well, I say I'm not going to tell them and then end up telling them. But, you know, I, I tried to be like Dave because he's real easy going and laid back. And I'm like, <laughs> Dave's answered everything is cast your care, and, you know, mine used to be try to figure it out and make it happen. 
Thank God I'm not like that anymore, but I'm not quite as good at casting my care as he is, and I probably never will be, and you know what? It's okay. You know why it's okay? Because I am what I am, and I'm changing as fast as I can, and God knows me, and he knows my heart, and you know what? God even likes me the way I am. And you know, to be honest, that's what real love is, when you accept a person where they're at because you believe that they're doing the best they can for where they're at right now. That's the thing that I adore about Dave is he, he likes my feisty personality. Sometimes I'll say, I know I need to change that. He's like, oh no, please don't, please don't. He's like, I'm his entertainment. <laughs> when Dave and I met, I was washing my mother's car and he was trying to flirt with me and he said, Hey, when you're finished washing that car, do you want to wash mine? And I said, if you want your car washed, wash it yourself. <laughs> and he said the thing that went off in him is that's the girl for me. <laughs> so he, he wanted to get married. He'd been praying for a wife, and he made one big mistake. He asked God to make it somebody that needed help. <laughs> and God answered his prayer. Boy, did God answer his prayer. But he said he knew right away I was going to be a challenge, and he liked that. <laughs> and I, try, I just didn't want to be the way I was. I didn't like my voice. I didn't like this. I didn't like something else. I never could have a lot of hair because my hair is real fine. It's not thin, but it's just like baby hair. And so I wanted long hair, and I wanted to be blonde, and my hair was brown, and I wanted to wait, like, you know, we're always wanting something that we don't have and are never going to have. And then sometimes you can't even like the people who have what you would like to have. <laughs> Come on, how many of you just hate skinny people? <laughs> don't you just, like, don't you just love it when some skinny person says, oh, it's five o'clock and I forgot to eat. I mean, I might forget my kids somewhere, but I don't forget to eat. And then, you know, there were all those super moms. I mean, they could do everything, everything. They painted, they sewed, they had gardens, they canned vegetables, I mean, just like, and all I wanted to do was rebuke devils and preach to somebody. <laughs> Come on. And I tell you what, is anybody in here tired of being at war with yourself? I don't even know how to tell you if if you're even remotely in this area that I'm talking about, I don't even know how to tell you how much it will change you and change your life if you will come to terms of peace with yourself. Well, Joyce, how can I like myself the way I act? Because you're growing. You're growing and you're changing. Matthew 5, 48, the Amplified Bible says, you therefore must be perfect. And that's a scary scripture. But then the Amplified Bible explains what that means. Growing into complete maturity of godliness in mind and character. Growing. <laughs> Not having arrived, but growing. If you want to be all that God wants you to be, and every day you're doing your best to be more and more like God, and you'll fail today, but tomorrow you're going to get up and do it again. You want God's will. You agree with God when he brings conviction into your life about something. But you can't grow if you're feeling guilty all the time. Does anybody understand that? 
You cannot grow if you're feeling guilty all the time. Paul said that he pressed toward perfection, but he still made mistakes. The apostle Paul made mistakes. You know the scriptures, Philippians 3, 10 through 14, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection, that I may share his sufferings, becoming like him in his death. Yes, it says if you're going to be like Christ, you're going to have to go through some suffering. We talked about that last night. That if by any means possible, I might attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or am already made perfect, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I've made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what is ahead. Yeah. Your sins have been paid for. You don't have to pay. All you have to do is believe, repent, and believe what the Word of God says. Receive it and keep pressing on to the next level of growth. You're going to be growing all your life. I know some of you, how many of you sometimes wonder if you're even saved? You think, my gosh, how could I be saved and act like this? I mean, I have crazy dreams. I mean, every once in a while I'll have a dream and wake up and think, <laughs> am I really a Christian? Paul took a step of faith and he forgot his mistakes. Let me read you something that I think you will enjoy. This is called the guilt trip story. I had not really planned on taking a trip this time of the year, and yet I found myself packing rather hurriedly. The trip was going to be unpleasant, and I knew that in advance, that no real good would come of it. You see, I'm talking about my annual guilt trip. I got tickets to fly there on I Wish I Had Airlines. <laughs> it was an extremely short flight. I got my baggage, which I could not check, so I chose to carry it myself all the way. It was weighted down with a thousand memories of what might have been. Nobody greeted me as I entered the terminal to the Regret City International Airport. I say international because people from all over the world come to this dismal town. As I checked into the last resort hotel, <laughs> I noticed that they would be hosting the year's most important event, the annual pity party. <laughs> well, I wasn't about to miss that great social occasion because many of the town's leading citizens would be there. First, there would be the Dunn family, you know, the should have done, would have done, and could have done. <laughs> and then came the I had family. You probably know of the wish I had's clan. Of course, the opportunities would be present, missed and lost. But the biggest family would be the yesterdays. There are far too many of them to count, but each one would have a very sad story to share. Then shattered dreams would surely make an appearance. And it's their fault would regale us with stories and excuses of how things had failed in their life. And each story would be loudly applauded by don't blame me and I couldn't help it. <laughs> by the way, if you want this story, if you go online and put in the guilt trip story, it'll pop up with my name. <laughs> Then shattered dreams would surely make an appearance, and it's their fault would regale us with stories. I read that part. Okay. Well, to make a long story short, I went to this depressing party knowing that there would be no real benefit in doing it. And as usual, I became very depressed. But as I thought about all the stories of failures brought back from the past, it occurred to me that all of this trip and subsequent pity parties could be canceled by me. 
I started to realize I didn't have to be there. I don't have to be depressed. One thing kept going through my mind, I can't change yesterday, but I do have the power to make today a wonderful day. I can't change yesterday, but I do have the power to make today a wonderful day. I can be happy, joyous, fulfilled, encouraged, as well as encouraging. Knowing this, I left the city of regret immediately, and I left no forwarding address. Amen. Am I sorry for the mistakes I've made in the past? Yes, but there is no physical way to undo them. So if you're planning a trip to the city of regret, please cancel all your reservations now. And instead, take a trip to a place called Starting Again. <laughs> I liked it so much that I've now taken up permanent residence there. My neighbors are the I forgive myself and the new starts. By the way, you don't have to carry around heavy baggage there because the load is lifted from your shoulders upon arrival. God bless you in finding this new town. You, you can find it. It's in your own heart. And when you get there, please look me up. I live on I Can Do It Street. <laughs> Now, don't be afraid to take that step of faith and say, could this really be for me? <laughs> could I really not be miserable every time I make a mistake for two or three days? Could I really just ask for and receive forgiveness and then just go on? <laughs> sure, I gotta be miserable for a while, not really, not if you really believe that the blood. See, under the old covenant, sin could only be covered. And you know, when something is covered, something ugly is covered up, you still know it's there. So it still kind of torments you. and You're afraid somebody might uncover it and see it. But under the new covenant, sin is no longer covered up. It is removed. It is washed completely away. <laughs> Left with no residue. The blood of bulls and goats could cover, but the blood of Jesus cleanses and completely removes even the very stain of sin. One of the old hymns says something about removes the guilty stain. I hope you're getting this. You see, I want you to go out of here with a new attitude. I know I've got faults. I know I make mistakes. I know I'm going to continue to make mistakes. But I love God and he loves me and I'm going to have a good relationship with myself. I'm going to enjoy spending time with myself. And you know what? The more you like you, the more other people will like you. Amen? Because you're going to be really pleasant to get along with. The spiritually mature do not waste their time in God's feeling guilty over every mistake that they make. As Joyce just shared, if you struggle with guilt and shame, there are wonderful truths in God's Word that will help you 
overcome. You know, it's, it's not easy. We're not trying to say this is simple, just do this. But the truth is that God's anointing is on you. That means his ease and his grace. And that's how you fight these things. And you have everything you need to have an amazing, extraordinary life, but only with his help. Dig into the word, see what it says. Heb je een vraag over de uitzending? Schrijf ons. Onze medewerkers beantwoorden graag jouw vragen. Contact at joyce-meyer.nl Meer dan 10 miljoen gevangenen zitten wereldwijd vast. It's a hostile territory prison. And I'm speaking proof of that. Zij die achter zulke muren leven zijn mensen. En Jezus vraagt ons om naar hen om te kijken. I'm here for a third degree burglary. I have a lengthy sentence of 400 months. The judge looked at me and said, I'm going to sentence you to spend the rest of your natural life plus 20 years behind these prison walls. A lot of people don't have family here. So they feel forgotten. There's not a lot of people beating the door down to get in here to see us. That outreach of the hand to touch their lives in a personal way, to, to come visit them, to, to see that somebody is really thinking about them, that somebody cares for them on the outside. You're giving to people that really are like at the bottom of the totem pole. And with your giving, that, uh, that's actually bringing somebody up. It's the fact that you thought about us, even if it was just to come by and have prayer. We just feel loved, you know, that we're not pieces of garbage, you know, um, thrown away, um, that somebody does value us still, and that there is hope, there's hope for us. Tot nu toe hebben we meer dan 3600 gevangenissen bezocht. Zijn er meer dan 3 miljoen cadeautasjes uitgedeeld? En meer dan 139.000 gevangenen hebben voor een leven met Jezus gekozen. Het is heel pijnvol en difficult om door het leven met een wounded soul te gaan. Ik weet omdat ik voor jaren dat leef dat way door te worden seksueel abused door mijn vader toen ik een jong kind was. But I learned that God could heal even my deepest hurts if I would just open my heart up and let him in. And in my new book called Healing the Soul of a Woman, you too can discover how to allow God into those wounded places in your life. God has a brand new beginning for you and you do not have to spend the rest of your life hurting. Bestel nu innerlijke genezing van de vrouw via onze website joyce-meyer.nl of bel 026 20 22 100.